Our special guest today is a talented actress who was diagnosed with cancer. She's a fighter and a crusader, and her experience will inspire you to consider all the options when faced with your own health challenges. Lourdes Cologne is with us today. I'm Mike Tucker, and we're here to help you create your best life possible. This is Lifestyle Magazine with your hosts, Dr. Sharmini Long, Obi OBDK, Lionel LaMountain, and Mike and Gail Tucker. Lourdes Colon was an actress on the rise when she was sidelined by lymphoma. Now in recovery, she realized an even more important role she needed to play. Welcome to Lifestyle Magazine. Welcome. Thank you. So Thank glad you. you're here. Now, we want to get to the diagnosis in just a little bit, the cancer, but I want to talk about your life before cancer. What were you doing? Um, my life before cancer, I w um, was an actress, and I still am, mm -hmm. but at the time I was, I was filming a lot. I was on, on a TV show called Without a Trace. Mm -hmm. I sure. Was, I played the role of Anna Rodriguez as a guest star, got put on the ballast to be considered to be a nominee for an Emmy on my role Wonderful. as Anna. Um, I was on The District. I hosted uh -huh. a TV show. I did a lot of national commercials. I was very busy. Yeah. yeah. And, and an exciting it. life. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah kind yeah. of living the dream. So. Oh, definitely living the dream. And it was great. And so, of course, while I was doing that, I really, because I have this love for for people, that I wanted to be a difference, I wanted to be an inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so I always thought that would be where I was going to get the inspiration was through my acting. Yeah, mm. yeah. But then something happened that changed everything. Yes. What was it? <laughs> uh, so, it, well, things kind of shifted. There was something off where I had just finished filming um, this film and I was really exhausted all the time. Yeah. I, I would nap, and I just could not get myself to be rested enough. So more than normal. I mean, Very just, more yeah. than normal. Like, I just could not shake it off. Hmm. And, um, and then I ended up with a lump on my, my neck. And hmm. that was like a really huge clue. So I thought, okay, there's a lump on my neck. I'm really exhausted. And so I pretty much knew. You put two and two together. Yeah, and I'm like, ah, it feels like I might have cancer, but I really don't want to say that. Yeah. You know, Were you hesitant so. to go do anything about it? I mean, yeah. like, if I well, don't, it will go away or well, it won't be true. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that, like, you know, if I just don't, if I ignore it, it would just go away kind of thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So um, I knew I had to go to the doctor, and I hated going to doctors because, mm -hmm. you know, like the doctor visit, you're sitting there forever just waiting to get called uh -huh. in. It's just like that uh -huh. whole, I felt like it just... Yeah took away so much of my time. Yeah. So, you know, I just didn't want to go. And then I didn't want to be told. Exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah, I still relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't tell me anything uh -huh. that's not going to be good. So I kind of avoided it for a while to go to the doctor mm -hmm. until I had no other choice. Yeah. And, then and when you went, what did you find out? Um, when I went, um, she wanted to do a biopsy because mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't look good. It was so obvious. Mm -hmm. And so it was just kind of like she did the biopsy. Everything was just quick. Mm -hmm. You know, they did mm -hmm. the biopsy. They called me in. I went in and then she said, um, the results came back and you have um, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm. Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. That's a that's the bad one, right? Right, the that one's one, the yeah. one. I think all of them are. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a good one, is there? Yeah. There's not well, a good like, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it was interesting because it was like the moment she told me that I had Hodgkin's lymphoma, and she started telling me like the procedures and mm -hmm. what and what needed to be done. I was like I like zoned her out, and then I started thinking, wow, this is the opportunity that I. That got presented to me. Oh that my I goodness! Could be a to be, right at that moment. That very moment, I thought I, I need to pick up a camera. I need to do research. I need to figure this out and come on and be a difference. That and is that an amazing was, response. Yeah. That is. You know, a yeah. lot of people tell me when they hear the the cancer word, they don't hear anything else after that. It's just just totally focused on self, panic, fear. Yeah. And although you went through some of that, you also at that moment yeah. said, "I can make a difference." I can make a difference. Come on. And and it was interesting because the doctor's like, <laughs> she goes. Um, so, well, how do you feel about that? Because I wasn't responding. I was just uh -huh. thinking, okay, this is perfect. Yeah. I've got to figure out <laughs> <Come on. laughs> what i got to do. Yeah, this is perfect. <laughs> I got, like, now I have a goal. <laughs> okay. Was, is there a little bit of denial in that at the same time? Like, okay, I can just work through this. Or, I, or was it really just... I just took it on. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah this bring is it like, on. Yeah, like this, yeah, bring it on. Now yeah. I, I got a purpose. Yeah. And because I knew how many people got affected by it. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen lots of friends and family go through it and get depleted. And then, mm -hmm. you know, and many had, who have passed away yeah. you know, with a poor quality of exactly. life before. So exactly. I just thought this is so perfect. Mm -hmm. So you created yeah. a documentary about yes. this, about your journey through this. Yes. And, and that is called? Create Option C. Create Option C. Yeah. And what does that mean? Well, create option C. Um, option C means, you know, to, uh, it's like almost getting creative and really doing the research, kind of taking back your power and figuring out what it is you need to do that's going to work with your body. And I felt that, um, you know, most people when we, when we get diagnosed, we first, we get scared and we have first. fear step in uh -huh. and then we're panicked and we're thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die and, yeah. uh -huh. and what am I going to do and wait, what am I going to tell my family, my friends and you know the whole, the whole mm -hmm. ordeal and um, create option to see is kind of like taking the fear out of the equation mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to just kind of see the whole picture and then t find the, the right doctor that's going to work with you as a team mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and figure out what it is you need to do. You know, there are so many things out there that can help you, you know, be strong physically yeah. and emotionally and mentally and spiritually that is so important. And I think when you, when you have the knowledge, when you get educated yeah. on what you have, yeah. you know, what are the things that you can do naturally, what are the things that you can do conventionally and how you can combine the two together or vice versa, which one you choose. But when you, I think when you get educated, you just feel powerful enough to do it. You, you took charge. Yeah, you, you just charge. you take charge. Really you don't about. feel yeah. hopeless, and that's good. you know it, you just get your life back. Yeah, yeah. and that's you what you don't just hand it is. over. Yeah. you take control. Right. We're out of time, but when we come back, a man who describes himself as Rordis's chief groupie, Isai Morales, is going to join us. We'll be right back. Criminal Minds actor Isai Morales is joining us now, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You Thank described you. yourself as a groupie <laughs> for Lourdes. I'm her biggest uh, fan. I'm sure you have your own groupies. <laughs> right now. Uh, well, you know, funny we should say that. Yeah. Um, I'm just, you know, I heard of her story yeah. after it, it commenced, and I heard that she was actually going to document her experience, which I thought, you know, that's... Who does uh, that? Yeah. yeah, because it's very personal. Right? Yes. If you see this this piece, it is very raw and gut-wrenching and, mm -hmm. and a testament to to a real artist to put away any, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the layers that we, we hide behind yes. in society. Yeah. Well, especially and, Hollywood. And I an mean, actress you know, at that. You've got yeah, a you image. don't take off the makeup. <laughs> that's you don't, right. Yeah. No, but she, she takes off uh, so much that you cannot help but to feel for her. You cannot help but to That's feel right. compassion. Truly identify with her. I mean, yeah, and, and, and a champion. I'm, I'm her fan because she's fought the fought and she documented it, not for her own sake, but for the well-being of others yes. who are, in my opinion, unfortunately, we, we live in a world that's blessed with many technological advances, but not as many people who are spiritually capable to, to mm -hmm. evolve along with them, if you know what I mean. Yes, yes. Absolutely. I feel like we are the United Farms of America. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, where we're all kind of mm -hmm. a corporate kept apart and, you know, everything's a money-making machine. And what happened to community? Yeah. What right. happened to the sense of a small town, you know, pulling for each other, mm -hmm. people helping each other? They, there's so little of that. So I wanted to help her. And you co-produced the, the documentary. Well, I, I joined them on board as exec producer, Executive basically producer, okay. championing uh, cool. her and her cause and this incredible, really it's a mindset where you let the food that, whether you call it nature or God created, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do what it was intended to do without the uh, machinations of man mm -hmm. that, you know, listen, I, I will go to a doctor if I need to, mm -hmm. but... Even the greatest doctor said, food is thy medicine, you mm. know? Medicine right. is your food. Mm -hmm. I mean... But it's still prevention is the best way, but even so, yeah. I mean... And even right, if you have... Right. But it also heals. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It heals as yeah. well. Absolutely. Well, let's go back a little bit to, we talked about create 
option C, but what what is that A and B in there? Is there <laughs> yeah. A, B, and C, or is that how it works? Yeah. What's A and yeah, B? you could mention, because I asked her the same, well, what's create option C? Well, C yeah. A is conventional. Is that you, okay. you, you take whatever yeah. you're, you're told. The doctor tells you, yeah. you do what you're told. This is what you're and, and there's a value to that, because after yeah. all, I mean, there's research that, sh that shows that, that this has an effect upon people, and so yeah. that's the reason why they use it, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, because so, it's, 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 you know, you have option A where literally you just take your life and you hand it over to the doctor. Okay. And and, and you All just right. follow everything they okay. tell you to do, and you do nothing on your own. Okay. okay. And then option B, um, which is interesting, I met so many people that did option B. My dad was one of them. And it's literally do nothing at all. Hmm. And just let life take its course and leave your hands mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. And they just don't fight it. They don't yeah. change anything. Okay. My and dad eventually did that at the end of his life, you know. But he, yeah. he was in his 90s. He said, Okay, we'll just go. Yeah. Right. You know? There's a value to yeah. that too. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that I know the human body is designed to heal itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you get out of its way, mm -hmm. if you stop poisoning it, if you have the right attitude. Again, I love what you said mind, body, and spirit, you know, mm -hmm. mind, body, soul. Mm -hmm. If you have that equilibrium, mm -hmm. You are much better off than someone who's focused it. on anything. It's the whole package, area. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It really and then is. we go to option and then C. C. And then option C, which is where you work as a team with your doctor. That's so smart. And that's that mm -hmm. that makes life so much better. Better. Yes. <laughs> I have another um, a, a suggestion for the word C, like the option C, not just ABC, but comprehensive. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh. It is the comprehensive option, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It is. It's, it's yeah. both well, and. It says you use every option available to you. Right. Mm -hmm. You really educate yourself on, you know, the conventional and all the pros and cons of it. Mm -hmm. You you get and you meet with a doctor that does alternative and you really just but really inform yourself talk with others who have done it naturally or who've done the convention and kind of put the two together to see what works with you mm -hmm. and I think when you do that it just it makes it so much more powerful for me I you know that's why I, I wanted to do the documentary that's why I wanted to do create option C because mm -hmm. it was like just seeing everything that was going on with people that I've seen get get affected by the cancer mm -hmm. I got clear that there had to be a better way, mm -hmm. that I had to get outside the box, mm -hmm. per se, and that um, that there had to be a better way to fight the cancer, and it had to be where you worked with your body instead of working against your body. Because mm -hmm. I yeah. think when you just do everything yeah. that becomes destructive, yeah. it makes it hard for the body to do anything yeah. other than be destroyed. So option C helped you, you use Good science, but you you also wanted to make sure that your body had every opportunity to be right. cleansed of impurities and to do its job right. and to heal you. Properly. Yes, you know, just like like each patient, each individual needs to take the responsibility to do the, the research and learn. Yeah, personal you know, responsibility on, this. on the diagnosis. Oh, absolutely. Right. I think that it would it would be great to find that doctor that's willing to also learn the other side of things. That's good. Because then they can combine this stuff together. And I, I and really we got to take a break here. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm sorry about that. No, no, Didn't no. that rude to interrupt you? Right? I, she's unstoppable. unstoppable. <laughs> she is unstoppable. But we're going to take a break. And we're going to come back. And Isai and Lourdes will join the crew in just a moment. There's more to come on Lifestyle Magazine. We're talking with Isai Morales and Lourdes Colon. And Lourdes, I know that you really wanted to help people with this, with your whole disease process, and you've created the documentary, and I'm really, I, I honor that. But this had to be hard. Talk to me about how hard this was. It was... It it was hard, and, and what made it hard was um, to continually stay positive while I was on camera. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I remember where I had like 5% in the usage of my lungs. Oh, and wow. I had wow. one lung that was completely gone, one that had just like that much usage, no. you know. Oh, wow. It was filled with fluid. Um, it, I was barely breathing. I had like days left to live. It was really, really bad. Okay. Days, days left, left to live. And you say yes. that and left. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Because I, I like to push the, was... <laughs> push the envelope there. Yeah. yeah um, it was, it was, yeah, it was, um, I was at the end and. Um, Tell the, 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 the trajectory. Basically, when we were first diagnosed, you said you're going to fight it with your doctor, right? Or, or you're going to do it all by yourself. I right? was I was going to do it naturally and by myself, mm -hmm. and then um, and then. But I wanted people to also understand what what spread cancer, yeah. 
you know, when you have cancer, what things to avoid. And so, you know, against my, my daughter judgment. and my husband. And better judgment. And better judgment. Well, I, actually, I'm, I still don't regret it. Uh, but I really wanted people to get mm -hmm. that there's things that we do that can make it worse. Okay. And so I chose to take that step and show them and say, see, this is how the cancer is now. And I do this and say, this is what spread it. And then, mm -hmm. and then you see the, the enormous growth. Um, within days. Oh, so um, no, which, by that evening, she was not feeling well. By that evening, she could feel the oh the growth. Mm -hmm. It was really disgusting. The growth, yeah, coming back. Yeah, yeah. And so this is after a specific radiation type of. Well, yeah, it's, it's a test they do, you know, I mean, to we, stage we, it. We don't want to legally uh, get in any trouble to mm. dis, you know, yeah, yeah. encourage no, it's just, a certain technique. It's but. just that you know, it's good to be informed. Yeah. Um, so that you know, each patient can say, do I want to risk taking that test? Yeah. Or not, yeah. you know. If I have cancer, why don't you do the test? We already got this. Let's yeah. not uh, battle well, it. What, what qualifying questions did you ask to determine if you're going to do an alternative treatment? Oh, um, actually, what I did. Well, I knew immediately I wanted to do alternative because I saw so many of my family and friends who got cancer and mm -hmm. did treatments and saw the quality of life they had, mm -hmm. and I just didn't didn't want to live that. Option A was not attractive. I think it's yeah. so yeah. important to be able to find a physician that you can partner yeah. with to yes. work through, you know, is this is this a yes. treatment that will can assist you and is right. legitimate? Were you able yeah. to find a physician who would partner with you? Yes. Um, it, it was, it, it took a bit because, you know, a lot of times when you go to a doctor and you say, I'm not going to do chemo, this mm -hmm. is what I want to do, they really don't want to work with you. Right. Um, it's really yeah. finding that doctor that cares enough to say, okay, yeah. let's do what you want to do. Yeah and let's monitor it and then work mm -hmm. with you and give you all the information. Because you have doctors that will give you the information. It's like, well, you know, these are the things that they have now with technology, and you still have that choice. Mm -hmm. So it was very important to find that doctor, and, yeah. and I was um, blessed with having that doctor. I think there's so many things you can do, even from a lifestyle standpoint, with your diet to help boost your immune system. Yes. And sometimes that's something that's not really talked about with cancer right. patients. Were there things that you did with your diet to, oh, yeah. to help boost your immune system? To oh, absolutely. Um, the there cancer. was many things. Um, that, that was the very first thing I started researching is what can I do to build my immune system, give myself a fighting chance? Mm -hmm. And there's so many things out there to really boost your immune system. One that I just not too fond of was <laughs> Some of them don't taste very good. Uh, it's so painful. Was wheatgrass. Mm. And you know, it it Yum. has it's got yeah. great properties. It's, you but it's get funny. used to it, though. Yeah, you do I, get used to it. Yeah, yeah. and it's funny because I met people that loved wheatgrass. I'm like, how is that possible? You know? But it really did make a difference, and it does build your immune system. And what I found, even taking wheatgrass, is I watched tumors shrinking just by doing the wheatgrass alone. Mm -hmm. So awesome. there is you know, there is many things to do. But I think it's really important to educate yourself because it's not just one thing. Yeah. Sure. You know, it's a, it's a combination of things. It's really staying away from things like sugar mm -hmm. and processed mm -hmm. foods and Refined artificial sugar, flavors yeah, yeah. and all that and really take your, your life back. And then, you know, in, in meditation and prayers and just, it's the whole sure. thing. Because yeah. I even remember um, when I was in a coma that, um, and I know that I was supposed to have any, any memory of it, <laughs> but I did. When I was in a coma, I actually had the privilege to see everybody panic and, and, and they're like just, yeah. and, and the whole time I'm thinking, oh, I want to tell them I'm okay. Yeah. I was completely oh, fine. You know, for me, I was actually, I thought I was like in this all Asian place with all Asian doctors and they were pumping me with all these natural herbs and that the herbs are actually healing me. You thought you were in a Chinese medicine. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. So, you know, I had no idea I was here in California, yeah. you know, right at the hospital. Oh, well. and, but, Isai, that's going to be difficult for you watching though your friend now go through this. The thing that was interesting is that, you know, I didn't know just how bad it was yeah. and then we, 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 we hear this is what we're doing and I'm like well how can I help and mm -hmm. and you know we put it on Facebook and man so much love yeah wow. you know that's a good yeah. thing people yeah. contributed we said listen yeah. we have one of ours is down and, and, and needs help yeah. and that's the mm -hmm. thing about community where people yeah. pull mm -hmm. together there's awesome. nothing like that thank yeah. you so much for your vulnerability in sharing your story. Yeah. It is much, much, much appreciated. <laughs> and thank you, Asai. Thank you, much. Thank for you. your part in this as well. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. We'll be right back. We have had a fascinating conversation today. I hate to see this show end, but Obi, you had a question you wanted to ask before we well, go. Well, we all know that exercise is great 
and it helps to prevent lots of different diseases. Was exercise vital to you in helping you to fight cancer, even when you probably didn't have the energy to exercise? Oh yes, it's very vital because actually when you exercise, it stimulates the immune system. Sure. So one of the things I did for exercise is I'd put music and I would dance. Mm. Okay, okay. That was my movement that to get yeah. going, yeah. Yeah. Like and even spirits. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it brings yeah, it's a sense so of joy. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. So also, it gave me both. <laughs> also, one of the most detoxifying things you can do is yeah. sweat profusely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. And, uh, and breathe. Mm -hmm. And I play tennis as voraciously as I can, or, or basketball or softball. Yeah. But things that keep you breathing, sweating, and in the sunlight. People are told, stay away from the sunlight. Mm -hmm. I think that's a mistake that we'll yeah, find is. out later. It stay is. away from yeah. abusing the sunlight if you're very fair. But right. even fair people need the vitamin D and calcium uh, processes that absolutely. happen from the sun and not from supplements. Mm -hmm. And we know there are links to vitamin D deficiency in, in certain types of cancer. Major. So getting out in the yeah. sun, getting fresh air, really yes. important. Oh, yeah. I think consistent. most Americans are deficient in vitamin D. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. exactly. How important was your family in helping you to help fight this thing? Because you can't do this alone. All right. Very important. And I actually, one of the things I think people need to understand when someone's fighting cancer is you need your friends and family to really support you. Sure. You know, when you're battling cancer, the last thing you want to do is battle your family and friends mm -hmm. as well because that becomes overwhelming. Mm -hmm. sure. So you should really be focused on what you need to do to get better and your family should be supportive in any decision you make. Absolutely. So what's your advice to family members? How do they support best? I think their, their best way of support is figure out what they, that person wants to do and then support them with that and then do the research with them and, and bring them stuff that they okay. know. That so whatever them. their decision is, Help Go with it. I mean, yeah. here's the one yeah. thing really quickly. You get a lot of skepticism from family members that are used to just hearing one thing. Mm -hmm. Don't laugh at the hope and the, the desires of someone who mm. wants to educate them. Don't be intellectually lazy. The more you read about it, the better you become at knowing about Thank it. Thank you so much, yes. both of you, for being here. We truly appreciate this. Isai Morales and Lourdes Colon, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for being a part of this one as well. We look forward to seeing you again next time. But until then, you take care of yourself. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching Lifestyle Magazine. Visit us online at lifestyle.org, where you can watch more programs and get more information on our guests.